Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of June, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological month, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now, and boy, is this a very special time. Now, early in the month, on the fourth of the month, we will have this month's full moon. Now, this full moon takes place at the top of your sky, having to do with career, social standing, and life purpose. So this full moon is an interesting one. It is part of a grand fire trine. This is key placements in each of the fire signs, speaking in supreme harmony with each other. Uh, this is energy of excitement and agency. So it's the full moon at the top of your sky. It is going to be Chiron in a financial part of your sky, having to do with money you earn and money that you spend. And it is also Mars moving through a part of the sky for you that has to do with your daily life. And so this is related to your work environment, for example, and work-related opportunities. So all of these are working very well together, very harmoniously, and this is an energy of blessing and opportunity, of agency and of creativity, deciding on the direction you want to go and putting your actions and your belief and confidence in that direction. Now, outside of career, this energy of this full moon can have to do with life purpose, where Chiron is self-love, and where Mars is how you're actually living day in and day out. There's a supreme harmony playing out here that can lend itself to blessings. Having said that, though, what we also have is a more challenging alignment from Saturn. And Saturn, of course, is in your sign. So this gets a little tricky. Uh, and this is energy you may need to be a little bit careful with. It is this alignment that speaks very powerfully to a depth within you, a determination within you to do the right thing, but also a need to commit, a need to understand the work and sacrifice involved and to decide that it's worth it. That's the thing with Saturn in your sign. What I'll tell you is quick gains don't usually happen with Saturn in your sign. But what does happen is the gains you make, you work for, and they last. They last possibly for the rest of your life. And that's part of the opportunity available to you now. Saturn in your sign can be a very empowering time in how it invites you to redefine happiness and root it in principles of longevity and self-respect. And with energy like this and this full moon speaking to that Saturn, it's the effort you take towards the achievement of goals that matter to you that become part of fueling healthy self-respect and stability for a very long time to come and well after this transit is over. These lessons will stay with you and strengthen you moving forward from here. You're at the beginning of a three-year cycle, so just settle in, right? There'll be lots of learning anytime Saturn is activated as it is now with this very powerful full moon. Now, navigating further, it is on the 18th of the month that we will have this month's new moon. This new moon takes place at the foundation of your chart, whereas that full moon is so public and out there it is that new moon that is very private. Well, here's the thing. That new moon is speaking with Neptune in your sign in a conversation of tension, also making somewhat of an alignment with Pluto as well, adding surprise moments of, of intensity and maybe even frustration as well. I'm sorry to say, but it does happen. That Neptunian energy, given that Neptune is in your sign, I feel like whatever's happening on the home front, whether you're buying, selling, moving, attracting a new roommate, uh, either there's mixed feelings or a lot of emotion or ambivalence. Uh, sometimes with this, there might be disappointment as well. Like maybe you put a bid on a house and you thought you were going to get it and then you didn't. Either is okay. But just understand that with this energy, it doesn't necessarily feel very stable. And some of that just might be your own fears, not anything literal that is taking place. You may feel a longing to spend more time at home, perhaps with your family of origin, 
uh, perhaps your parents where that applies. So some of that yearning and sadness may stir at this time, along with yearning and sadness for the past. The thing is, though, that the past can never be again. That's sort of how it works, right? It is the case that we can never return to a phase of our life, a moment of our life. They're just moments and you're present for them. You can enjoy them that much more. You can make the most of them that much more, learn from them that much more, but moments, they come and they go. That is the nature of life itself. And this might be a lesson or an insight that you need to be reminded of, especially in the days around that new moon. Now, I actually like the fact that, and there's a saving grace happening, and it happens technically the following day on the 19th, but it involves Jupiter and Saturn. They're moving so slowly that really you'll feel this energy at the time of the new moon as well. Jupiter in a communicative part of your sky, Saturn in your sign. I love this energy. I feel like it's you either uh, connecting with a sibling, cousin, or neighbor, or maybe just having the right conversation at the right time randomly or spontaneously with another person. But it makes all the difference in helping you to cultivate an awareness of the things that do feel stable in your life, mainly within you. A conversation sets you right gets you seeing things in a much more empowered and practical way, helping you to identify the actions you can take to feel better. And goodness, does it work rather quickly at this time. Another peak moment for this larger Jupiter in Taurus transit is going to happen at the very beginning of the month. And that is Jupiter meeting the North Node in the sky, a very powerful and important energy. This is a doorway opening from which new people, places, things, situations enter that represent karmic blessings. Now, the thing to keep in mind, though, is sometimes in the moment, it might look like a non-event. You might not realize how important a connection you're making actually is for you and for this moment. And it is important nonetheless. Sometimes it takes time. And it might take a lot of time to truly understand how the good things that follow are seeded in, really began in this moment, but it behooves you to create a lot of pathways from which the universe could welcome blessings into your life. Strive to meet new people wherever possible and as much as possible. And for you, strive to come across information, uh, read different types of books, be open to synchronicity uh, and spontaneity as well. Have random conversations with your neighbors and people in your neighborhood or reconnect with a sibling or cousin at this time. This could be a seed of a thought or an idea or a meeting with someone else or meeting someone who eventually will introduce you to someone else. But yes, in many ways, you may come to look back and realize how much good opened up to you as a result of what was the very beginning of a very seed now. Now, where it comes to matters of love, keep in mind the first five days of this month, you will continue to have Venus moving through that flirtatious part of your sky. And it is next month that we are going to have a new moon in that part of the sky as well. So there's lots of opportunities here to connect with new people in a flirtatious and open way to feel connected to a spirit of love that much more as well. And also to put things into perspective, just a little bit later this year, we are going to have a powerful extended Mercury cycle in your opposite sign. And so Lots of focus on partnerships coming up ahead. And of course, I say this to you because after the first five days of this month, we are going to have Venus leave that heart-oriented part of the sky for you and move into a part of the sky that has to do with your daily life, how you're actually living and what someone is actually showing you, what they're demonstrating to you. Habits become important in love. Now, here's the other thing. Normally, Venus spends about a month per sign per year, going all the way around the zodiac over the course of a year. As Venus enters this brand new part of the sky, it's going to be four months here. Four months. And of course, that is because 
late this month on the 20th, Venus will go into shadow on the 23rd of July. Venus will go retrograde. And then it is going to be as you navigate further, the first days of September, Venus goes direct. And then the first days of October, Venus will leave shadow and then very quickly enter into your opposite sign. I do think there are going to be a lot of Pisceans who feel like there's stuff that they're getting in order for themselves as part of preparing for a focus on another person that is right around the corner. And that's a good instinct to trust. But for all that, it could also be that you're looking at your daily life, how love shows up there. So for those of you open to meeting someone new, I do think it is very possible that you connect with someone in places that you frequent every day. I want to just let you know this Venus retrograde season, once it starts the 20th of this month, it is going to be a doozy. <laughs> and what I mean by that is there are big energies playing out that are bringing with them an influx of all kinds of feelings, emotions, experiences, frustrations as well. I'm sorry to say it does happen. And of course, there is going to be a Venus retrograde special horoscope. So be on the lookout for that. Having said that, um, there are other points of strength. Of course, I talked about uh, Jupiter. You can tap into that energy, stay open within your neighborhood, because where it is that you're looking at places you frequent, especially your work environment for an office romance, things could come out into the open very quickly, especially once we navigate to the end of the month. Things get really messy very quickly as well, where you really see like emotional games and strings being pulled in a way that doesn't feel comfortable to you. And so pace yourself and be yourself, as I like to say. But yeah, energy like this says you want to stay open to your community, your immediate environment. You want to seek out people you can talk to. That's tapping into that Jupiter, which brings out your very best. However, where it is that those places you're at every day, people you interact with regularly, that's where you may want to proceed with some caution. For those of you just starting to date someone, what a remarkable time this can be. So a lot of this comes down to being honest about how this person lives and whether or not that works for you. I think this is especially likely right around the fifth. It's a real moment of truth in that regard, what works for you and what doesn't. And this energy is more likely to feel strong where there are uh, incongruities between you and this person and what it is that you actually live, what your habits are and theirs. And so where there's that disconnect, it is going to feel very strong, if not overwhelming, especially about five days, give or take a couple days on either side into this month. But if you end up navigating beyond that, remember this larger Venus retrograde season is looking at habits and rituals and whether or not this works for you, whether or not it's too much like you and you want to change. <laughs> this can be part of the consideration navigating forward from here. And for those of you in an established bond, what a remarkable time this can be. Well, look, love is something that isn't just said. It is lived. It is demonstrated day in and day out in how you speak to this person, how you talk to this person, how you care about this person, and how cared for you feel by them. That is going to be a big theme for you this month and beyond as we embark on Venus in this part of the sky for the next four months. So very big energy is playing out here. But I have to say, as long as both of you are talking about it, talking through it, this can be a very loving time and a time that heals all kinds of things. And in all kinds of ways, whether it's within the relationship or just, you know, healing in terms of feeling better on a health level. If the two of you keep those lines of communication open, relate to each other spontaneously and on a level of equals, well, that is where love has the potential to grow that much stronger. It is when you are 
over focused on the little details of how they eat or what they're doing or how they chew their food. If you are paying too much attention, or I would say any attention to how someone is chewing their food, there's something else going on in your life, <laughs> I have to say. And that might have to do with the relationship itself or not. But that's a signal to you that perhaps you're focusing in a direction that is not what it's really about. And that realization gives you a chance to go deeper, to understand what you really feel. And if there's anything there that needs to be addressed and healed and brought love into, you set the intention to do just that. What I love about this month for you, there's so much here. It's a valuable and meaningful astrological moment. Wow, this is a very big time. Um, look, Jupiter is doing remarkable things this month right out of the gate. That North Node conjunct Jupiter is a big transit, but it's not as obvious as, say, Jupiter sextile Saturn, especially for you. That plays out on the 19th of this month. But when Jupiter conjuncts the North Node, doorways open, dramatically so, from which new people, places, things, situations enter that represent karmic blessings. For you, those beginnings, those seeds will be very spontaneous, like a flash of insight or a moment of interaction with another person. But it is only when you look back that you'll realize how many good things came to be as a result of the seeds that took place now. Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with choose your membership rate. Now, higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.